Hi, I'm Box Owl. This is Graham. Those are some gunshots in the background, so we know we're in Montana. We are here to introduce you to a series of videos designed to complement the NRSM 102 class, which is a class that teaches uh, students about Montana range plants. These videos were made possible with a grant from the Montana State Teaching and Learning Committee and we'd like to thank them for their donation. The first video that you're going to see deals with descriptions of the major grasses and grass-like plants covered in class. Crested wheatgrass or Agripyrum desertorium is a perennial introduced cool season invader type grass. Its key characteristics are a spike-like inflorescence, characteristic of wheat grasses, grows about to three feet tall. Here we have a picture in the field of crested wheat grass. The spike inflorescence that looks like a fish skeleton is the best characteristic. Since it is a wheat grass, it also has oracles in the collar region. which is also a very good characteristic for wheat grasses. Western wheatgrass or Pascopyrum smithii is a perennial native cool season increaser. Like other wheat grasses it has the typical spike inflorescence with oracles at the collar and the major identifying characteristic is the presence of a rhizome. This is a field uh, example of western wheatgrass. Grows in large bunches. Here you can see the spike inflorescence. So the spikelets are attached directly to the main stem. And at the collar region you can see the presence of oracles right in the collar region. Blue bunch wheatgrass or Pseudorogenaria spicata is a perennial, native, cool season, decreaser, and the state grass of Montana. It has a spike inflorescence with divergent ons in the spikelet, oracles, and a spike. This is a field example of blue bunch wheatgrass that can grow almost two to three feet tall. Here you can see the divergent ons in each one of the spikelets and see how they're attached directly to the main stem with strong basal leaves, oracles present at the collar, and leaves that come off at 45 degrees. Red threon or Aristida longicetta is a perennial, native, warm season, and can be an increaser or invader. Usually this plant increases with increased grazing and if you have a lot of it in a pasture it's indicative of heavy grazing especially with sheep. This is a picture in the field of red threon. This is taken at Three Forks State Park. You can see that very characteristic seed that has three ons looks like a helicopter very distinctive, easy to tell this plant, and it, it's a large bunch grass with big awns. Blue Grandma or Budalua gracilis is a perennial, native, warm season increaser, one of the most common grasses in the western United States, has a very characteristic one-sided raceme inflorescence. A lot of students say it looks like an eyebrow so it's very easy to distinguish. Let's look at it in the field. You can see that one-sided raceme. So it looks like that long straight inflorescence. Very characteristic of this plant. All the Budaluas have that type of inflorescence with very strong basal leaves that are, sometimes have a little bit of hair along the margins of the leaves. Smooth brome or Bromus inermis is a perennial introduced cool season invader came from Europe 
and is one of three bromes. So all the bromes have an M or a W in the leaf, a world panicle, and this particular plant has a rhizome. In the field, it grows in one large mat, or in other sense, it's rhizomatous. It has many plants. It has a world panicle at the leaves, an M or a W along the margin. It has a small ligule, and it also is rhizomatous, the only brome that has a rhizome. Mountain brome, or Bromus marginatus, is a perennial native cool season decreaser and is fairly rare in the foothills region of southwestern Montana due to its high palatability. In other words, grazing animals really like it. It also has a very characteristic hairy base or hairy mountain man brome. This is a picture of it in the foothills of the Bridgers. You can see those very strong inflorescence. Here's another picture that shows the erect nature of the inflorescence. The sheath wraps around the comb and here's a picture of the base showing you the hairy base of the comb or the stem. Very characteristic. Cheatgrass brome or Bromus tectorum is an annual introduced cool season invader. The only annual that we have on our first set of grasses. It has long pedicels or wavy stems. It has a world panicle and an M or a W in the leaf like all the other bromes. This is a pattern where you usually see cheatgrass growing in very disturbed areas. This you can see the world panicle and the wavy nature of the pedicels. Very droopy in appearance and an underdeveloped root system characteristic of annual plants. Buffalo grass or Buchol dactyloides is a perennial native warm season increaser. One of the most grazing resistant plants in Montana. It's got a male and female parts. The male inflorescence looks like two little flags and the female looks like a pistillate flower underneath. This is a male plant showing you the two little flags. It looks like a miniature blue grandma plant. And the biggest characteristic of this plant, of course, are these stolons or above ground stems. So you can see that pointer looking at that above ground runner, much like a strawberry. That's the very characteristic threadleaf sedge or Carex filifolia is a perennial native cool season increaser that is not truly a grass but is a sedge. So many sedges have three sided edges but not this one. It has very enrolled leaves and grows in upland situations and looks similar to blue grandma. So you can see by this diagram and the pencil size it's a very low growing two or three inch tall plant. In a very good year it might get six inches tall but look at the inflorescence. A lot of students say it looks like a little pine cone. So it's very different from all the other grass inflorescence with small dense leaves but a pine cone like inflorescence. Canada wild rye or Elemus canadensis is a perennial native cool season decreaser. This plant is usually found in solitary stalks in riparian areas or overflow areas with high moisture and can grow to five to six to seven feet tall. Very distinctive plant in overflow areas. If you look at the spike inflorescence of wild rye, it is very large compared to other, let's say, agripyrons or wheat grasses. That stalk you can see by the size of my hand is probably six to eight inches long. So very characteristic, very dense spike with very long leaves and a very tall. Idaho fescue or Festuca idahoensis is a perennial native cool season increaser. One of the most prominent grasses in the Montana foothills. 
it has a world panicle, very strong V-shaped spikelets, little awns present at the tips of the spikelets. Here we have a typical example of Idaho fescue in the field. Very basal enrolled leaves, again a world panicle, and small awns presence on each one of the spikelets. This is a picture of the glooms left behind after all the seeds have fallen out. Rough fescue or Festuca camprestris is a perennial native cool season decreaser. This is a plant that cannot withstand a lot of heavy grazing, usually no more than 50% utilization. Very similar to Idaho fescue except it has more florets per spikelet. So here you can see the large number of florets per spikelet on the inflorescence. It has a world panicle just like some other plants but it's got very strong V-shaped inflorescences or spikelets and then the bases are usually have a purple appearance in the field and the leaves extend farther up the stem than Idaho fescue. Foxtail barley or Hordium jubatum is a perennial native cool season increaser. The very long awns can often cause damage to livestock when grazing is found in overflow sites and usually a problem when it's produced in hay where that causes injury to animals. Here's a typical overflow site with foxtail barley. This is over by Manhattan in a low swale area with lots of extra moisture. That's typically where you find this plant. Just like the name implies, it looks like a foxtail. It's a very dense inflorescence attached directly to the main stem. Prairie June grass or Cholaria macrantha is a perennial native cool season increaser. This is a plant that has few distinguishing characteristics, but it does have a panicle that looks like a spike and narrow small basal leaves. Looking at this plant in the field you can see that the spike-like nature of the inflorescence makes it look like uh, some type of wheat grass but it's really a panicle so you need to pull this apart a little bit and you can see that it does have a small ligule produces excellent forage but it really is not very abundant and doesn't produce a lot of pounds per acre. Timothy or Phleum pretense is a perennial introduced cool season invader. It has a very dense panicle that looks like it's a spike but it's very cylindrical and round. If you look at the individual seeds they look like little devil horns and the plant also has a very prominent ligule in the collar region. The plant typically grows in a mat or has a lot of other Timothy plants around it. It's usually planted to stabilize soils so it's used everywhere. You can see by the cylindrical appearance has a very characteristic seed head. The presence of a strong ligule in the collar region and is often used as horse hay. Kentucky bluegrass or Poa pretensis is a perennial introduced cool season invader. This plant as a typical bluegrass has railroad tracks in the center of the leaves. It has a world panicle and it has a rhizome and is very matte forming. The inflorescence is typically drooping and pyramid shaped. You can see sometimes it's very robust. A lot of florets per spikelet all emanating from a common point so it's another world panicle. It has enrolled basal leaves and come to a keel and it also has a rhizome. Sandberg bluegrass is Poa secunda. It's a perennial native cool season increaser. Like other bluegrasses it has railroad tracks in the leaves. It's got a very prominent ligule 
that comes to a point. It has keel shaped leaves that also come to a boat like point. Here we have a picture of in the field up by Glacier National Park. This is a an example from a mount that shows the lower enrolled nature of the leaves. It's usually a single basal plant but has a very prominent ligule and no rhizomes compared to Kentucky. Needle and thread or Hesperostipa camata is a perennial native cool season increaser. This plant like other stipas has one floret per spikelet so it's very uh, distinguishable. The long on and very sharp point of the seed is also the best feature. In the field when the plant loses its seeds you often see the sheath waving in the wind or some people call it a flag plant. Here we can see that very distinguishable long on attached directly to the seed. The on is can sometimes be 15 centimeters long and twisted and uh, can cause injury. Green needle grass, Nacella virigula, is a perennial native cool season decreaser. So if you see a lot of this plant in a pasture, that's a very good indication that that pasture has not received a lot of heavy grazing. It has one floret per spikelet and the on is usually bent twice. Here's a very good uh, representation of green needle grass. Very tall, grows on clay soils. Easy to see the twice geniculate on or bent over twice. So very good, highly palatable plant. Very good for livestock grazing.